What's up fish tank people this is Aquahound and on today's episode of In-Depth we're going to be taking a closer look at the Black Convict Cichlid. And some common nicknames are Zebra Cichlid or just Convict Cichlid. The scientific name is Argocentris nigrofasciata. A little history on the Convict Cichlid. Albert Gunther originally described the species in 1867 after Frederick Duquesne Godman and Osbert Salvin collected specimens in Central America. In 2007 the species was moved from the genus Arcocentris to a new genus Amatitilania based on Juan Schmitter's Soto study of Arcocentris species. However, a 2008 study led by Oldrich Recon proposed moving the species in Cryptoheros and Amatitilania including Amotitilania nigrofasciata into the genus. The convict cichlids can display significant color variation across its range. Some of the regional variants are now considered different species. In the cichlid keeping hobby, Rusty Wessel collected one such fish, Amotitilania sequa, which means Honduran red point, from a stream in Honduras. The Honduran Red Point Convict ranges from Atlantic Honduras south to Costa Rica. Other new species collected are from Lake Cotopique in El Salvador and from Panama's Atlantic coast. Argocentris nigrofasciata, which is used to cover all these species, is restricted to the northern population ranging from El Salvador to Guatemala on the Pacific coast and from Honduras to Guatemala on the Atlantic coast. This species also occurs outside its natural range in Australia in the warm affluent of power stations in Victoria and in tropical Queensland. In addition to Australia, the species has been introduced to Reunion, Japan, Mexico, Taiwan and the USA. They originate from Nicaragua to Costa Rica and they're most commonly commercially bred. The recommended tank size is at least 20 gallons, but through personal experience I recommend 30 gallons because these fish are easy breeders and you gotta have somewhere to go with the fry. Males can range from about 4 to 5 inches long while females are a little bit smaller at 2 to 3 inches. The habitat of a convict is not really important. They're always at home no matter what decor you put in your tank. However, they should be kept in a well-filtered aquarium with a few flat rocks and a cave or two. Plants are not recommended. Through personal experience, just keeping them with rocks and caves and gravel and even large pieces of driftwood make a perfect habitat. Convicts are a very hardy species that can adapt to just about any water conditions, which is why it makes such a good beginning fish. This fish has a pattern of black stripes on a grayish background and a greenish tint on the fins. The females, however, have a orange scales on their lower body and dorsal fins, and the male is larger and less colorful. He has a steeper forehead and longer fins. As it ages, the male will acquire a fatty lump on the forehead. I recommend keeping these fish in their own separate tank and not mixing them with a community due to their aggressive tendencies, especially when it comes to breeding. Moving on to the breeding behavior. Probably known as the most easiest to breed fish in fresh water. After fertilization, the eggs will hatch after approximately 72 hours. During that time, the parents will expel any intruders and potential egg predators from around the nest. They also fan the eggs, which means moving water with their fins over the clutch bring oxygen into the eggs. They fan the eggs for both day and night using the sense of smell to recognize the presence of the eggs in the dark and keeping their pelvic fins in contact with the eggs to remain at the right distance for fanning. Now after hatching a further 72 hours is required for the larvae to absorb their oak sacs and develop their fins 
prior to becoming free swimming fry. Now once they're in the free swimming stage, fry forage during daylight in a dense school and return to the cave or crevice for the night. Like all other cichlids, the parents also retrieve their young just before dark, supping up, I'd say, three to four fry at a time into their mouth, swimming them back into the nest and spinning the young into it. Brood care of eggs, larvae, and free swimming juveniles in the wild can last four to six weeks and occur only once per season for the majority of females. In contrast, females in aquariums are known to breed many times per year with short intervals of 12 to 13 days between broods. As long as suitable rocks or similar surfaces are available for them to lay their eggs on. In my personal experience, they will breed every, I would say, two to three weeks. Once they lay their initial eggs, they will guard their fry, and then once you remove the fry from the tank, they will spawn almost a week later. You know, it's just, it's just insane. But like I said, they're the easiest to breed freshwater fish, and I highly recommend it if you want to enjoy their breeding behavior because they do, they act like parents, and once they pair off, they will remain a pair for life. And the fry will most likely stick close to the parents and remain in the one spot due to the fact that usually, through my experience, the female will keep the fry in check and won't let them stray too far from their cave or their initial spawning site. I would say to promote breeding, I would increase the water temperature between 75 and 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Because usually you keep these fish in about, I would say, 68 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, right in that range. But raising that temperature up a few degrees might trigger them to breed. And that's just a little thing that I've learned through personal experience. You raise up the temperature and it kind of, for some reason, it triggers them to breed. And the next morning there's eggs on the rock. So I highly recommend doing that if you want to breed them. After they lay their eggs, it takes a few days for the eggs to drop down. And what happens is they drop off the rock and then they stay down on the gravel and then they eventually hatch and then you have your fry. And it takes about, through my experience, it takes about a week. Some people it takes only a couple days. Some it takes more than a week. It all depends, I guess, really on what your water parameters are. But a really uh, interesting thing is when I first started breeding these fish, uh, I noticed that when the fry would wander off too far from the cave or their initial spawning site, the female will actually go and pick them up with her mouth and bring them back and spit them back with the bunch and they all kind of keep right in that one area and if they stray too far off the female will uh, go grab them and spit them back into the group. I, I uh, thought they were eating them at first because I wasn't sure and then I had to look real close and I see she was actually spitting them out back in the group. So that's just something to keep in mind when you do successfully breed convicts. Just know that they're not eating your baby fry. They're actually just putting them back in the group. The care level on convict cichlids is, in my own personal experience and what I've heard from everyone else that I've talked to, that they are very easy to keep. And like I said, one of the easiest fish to breed in freshwater that is. And like I said, their temperament is really aggressive, so just make sure that you keep them in a tank by themselves. Don't mix them in with a community, even if you have other cichlids, because like I said, especially during breeding, they will become very aggressive and they will take out full Oscars, full grown Oscars. I have, I have them in my 55 gallon tank and they just recently spawned and during that spawn when they laid their eggs what happened was is they would fend off all the fish around that one rock that they placed their eggs on and several times that Oscar came over and that the male convict sickly he went right after the Oscar and just took them on no problem and so just keep that in mind they will become very aggressive towards any other fish you have in the tank especially during breeding these fish are very, very aggressive, probably one of the most aggressive fish in fresh water. But some fish that are compatible with them are green tares, jack dempseys, red devils, and Texas cichlids. Feeding is very simple. They accept pretty much any food offered. 
you can feed a varied diet of the commercial cichlid foods available as well as frozen foods such as blood worms and krill. I recommend feeding the fry uh, crushed flake food and newly hatched brine shrimp. Through my experience of keeping the black convict cichlid I would highly recommend it to all you beginners out there who want a really easy freshwater fish that you can enjoy and not worry so much about water parameters and a bonus they're great breeding fish so you'll get lots of fry which you can sell to your local fish store or give to your friends I just want to give a big heads up though that if you do have a pair of convict cichlids they will breed for life and you will have lots of fry so if that's something you want to pursue then I say go for it on average my my pair usually breeds about 50 to 60 of them at one time just keep that in mind when you're thinking about getting convict cichlids that they will breed a lot but the, overall they are a great fish and they're fun to watch and that'll do it for this week's in-depth segment on the black convict cichlid thanks for watching like comment and subscribe